This was like a whirlwind. People like me who will not shut the fuck up. Maybe I'll just cut that because I don't know if I can say that on the internet. Can I hear some commotion for the cover? I have a cold, black, dead heart. Oh, hell yeah, sign me up. I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping. You know what, let's freaking do it. Hi, I'm Sam. There's quite literally no one asking me to do this, but after talking such a big game in my mid-year freakout tag video, saying I haven't bought many books this year, I proceeded to purchase 45 books over the last several weeks, and I feel that it's only right that I fess up and share with you all the books that I have hauled. So of the 45 that I purchased, 28 are ones that I have already read. I know that I love them, so it was a very intentional purchase to add to my collection. And of the 45, 27 I purchased used, and then the remainder I purchased brand new. So I might start out with my manga that I purchased, because some of the series I've talked about quite a bit on my channel, so I'll kind of just go over them briefly. But then there are a lot of new series here that I'm purchasing, have not yet shared on my channel. So the first thing I want to talk about is the biggest book that I purchased, and that is The Art of Haikyuu. So if you're new here, I love Haikyuu. It is a shounen manga about high school boys volleyball. And despite its seemingly frivolous content and storyline, it's one of the most compelling works of fiction I've ever read and has some of the best character development in any story I've ever read. I have fully collected every Haikyuu volume. I pretty much purchase any Haikyuu merch and paraphernalia that I see in public anytime I find it. So I am a Haikyuu super fan and I highly, highly recommend this. So this is just a really cool art book and a really great collection piece for other people like me who will not shut the fuck up about Haikyuu. Next, I purchased the newest volume that was released of Killing Stalking, the deluxe edition. So this is the third volume. I've already read this entire series digitally and I am purchasing this as it is released in physical copies because I freaking love this series so much. So this is psychological horror that I think in some instances has been mismarketed as a boy's love romance, but this is very much horror and and probably one of the most violent and disturbing things I've ever read. So if you are a romance girly and you're wanting to get more into boys love, this probably wouldn't be the place to start, but if you're a horror girly wanting to get into boys love, maybe check out Killing Stalking. And then another new release that I purchased because I am a huge Junji Ito fan. So I of course had to purchase his new short story collection. And admittedly his Soichi stories aren't my favorite, but I am a Junji Ito collector. So I had to get this and I'll obviously still read it and give it a chance, but I think I've already read most of the stories in here, but still I of course want to continue purchasing these Viz releases because not only are they really gorgeous, but I wanna continue encouraging these publishing companies to pick up horror manga and continue publishing it here in the United States. Okay, and then while we're on the subject of Junji Ito, I was able to acquire the second and third volumes of Junji Ito's Museum of Terror. Museum of Terror 1 is Tomie 1, and then this is Tomie 2. I think the stories within the first and second volumes are now in the Tomie Viz Media release, which I also have. And then this one is kind of an offshoot and other short stories besides Tomie. So this has like the long hair in the attic, which is another really classic one of his. So just really, really a fantastic addition to my collection. And I am very, very, very excited to finally have these and finally have the Museum of Terror series completed. The next books that I purchased, I purchased an entire manga series, which to be fair, I think, yeah, there's only 12 volumes in this series. And I was able to purchase these omnibus volumes, which have three manga volumes in a single one. So that is the series Hot Gimmick by Miki Aihara. And this is another series that I read around the time I was reading Junji Ito for the first time. And this is a series I really probably should not have been reading as a middle school girl. This is a shoujo romance manga with a pretty dark edge. We're following this girl in a corporate company housing complex in Japan. And there's one guy in this complex that she really hates. He's always been really mean to her. And he kind of ends up getting some dirt on her and he blackmails her and says, I'll tell everyone your secret unless you become my slave. So probably shouldn't have been reading that when I was like 12, but 
definitely look up content warnings and proceed with caution. There's an enemies to lovers thing. There's a lot of betrayal. There's like a stepbrother who becomes like a little bit interested in his stepsister. So I don't, maybe I'll just cut all this. Maybe I'll just cut that because I don't know if I can say that on the internet. Oh God. This is like a lot harder to talk about than I thought it was going to be. But yeah, I kind of had forgotten about this series and then I randomly saw someone else reading it on Goodreads and I was like, oh, I love this series growing up. I want to reread it. And then as I was rereading it, I was like, I think I'm gonna buy these. And then I saw that they had these omnibus editions, so I bought them. So the next four books are four volumes of another manga series I read when I was a kid that I also probably should not have been reading when I was a kid. So this is an older series that has not had a re-release. So these are first edition volumes and they are really hard to track down. So I was really excited to not only find these used, but for a really reasonable price. So that series is Tramps Like Us by Yayoi Ogawa and this is about a woman named Samir who is a corporate worker and she feels a lot of pressure to get married and settle down and she becomes engaged to one of her co-workers who's like this perfect guy really good looking she really likes him but she doesn't feel like she can actually be her real self around him and while she's kind of going through all of these emotions she runs into this really handsome younger guy living on the streets at the time she found him and she immediately becomes really endeared to him so she invites him to come stay with her and live as her pet. <laughs> she literally treats him like a dog and like he just is like a source of comfort for her and the more she is able to be herself in front of him the more she realizes that maybe he's not just a pet to her. Don't know if I should have been reading this when I was that young but <clears throat> I did. Okay, last few volumes of manga and then I'll get on to novels. I don't even know how I stumbled onto this series, but wow, this was like a whirlwind. Like one of those where you start reading and I like could not do anything else until this series was finished. I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping. It was kind of unhealthy, but I love this series so much. So that is My Love Mix Up. So the art is by Aruko and that story is by Wataru Hinekure. This is really good. I really like this. So, okay, I got volumes one through five. I got these used, I think for like 25 bucks. And this is a relatively new series too. So I was like, oh hell yeah, sign me up. But I originally read this digitally, which I read it in at the end of July. So I haven't even talked about it in a wrap up yet. So this is a little sneak peek behind the curtain. So this is about a boy in high school named Aoki. And he asks his crush, Mio, to borrow her eraser. And he's, you know, in class, doing his thing, whatever, whatever. And then he drops the eraser and the boy in front of him picks it up. And it's like one of those erasers that has like the like, like cardboard cover and it had like slipped out of its cardboard cover a little bit and the boy in front of him sees that it has his name written on it with a little heart next to it. So okay, a lot to unpack here. Basically Mio, it's her eraser. So she has a crush on this guy, but this guy saw it fall off of Aoki's desk. So he assumes that Aoki is the one who has a crush on him and Aoki being like the nice guy that he is, he doesn't want to like say like, oh no, Mio is the one who likes you. One, because he doesn't want to like out her. Two, because he likes her. So he doesn't want to like make that happen. So he just goes along with it and pretends that he has a crush on this guy whose name is Ida. And it is just so funny. Like I remember growing up when I was first reading manga, there was a lot of shoujo romance manga that I read that was just so laugh out loud funny. And it's been so long since I've been able to find another series that really made me laugh so much. But there's just so much about the art style that's so freaking funny, but also so wholesome and pure. And it's just these four high school students trying to figure out their feelings and their like who they actually like and what it even means to like someone and it's just so wholesome and like I have a cold black dead heart so it is even harder for wholesome content like this to actually make me feel moved and not just make me cringe and like want to peel off all my skin and die I love this series so much I like how I was like, I'm gonna save my feelings for the wrap up. And then I proceeded to just word vomit everything to you guys. But those are the books that I got. Okay. Now we are on to novels. So next I purchased Now You're One of Us by Asa Nonami. This one I talked about in my Garbagas TBR. And I didn't realize that this was gonna be such a hard book to get my hands on. I couldn't get it from my library. I couldn't even get it on interlibrary loan. So I don't know if this is like a rare book. So I already talked about this a little bit, but this is about a woman who marries into a family and then 
then it's like this sort of old fashioned family where they all live together on this like big estate. When she gets there, they're like all very welcoming. But then the more time she spends there, she's like, something is not right with this family. So I think it's gonna be like culty, black magic, maybe satanic vibes, which I'm very much looking forward to. Next, I think I got this for my birthday actually. I was really happy to get this because I had just read another book by this author, really liked it. So that is Hangs a Man by Shirley Jackson. 17 year old Natalie Waite longs to escape home for college. Her father is a domineering and egotistical writer who keeps a tight rein on Natalie and her long suffering mother. When Natalie finally does get away, however, college life doesn't bring the happiness she expected. She becomes infatuated with a married professor and feels lost and overwhelmed. Little by little, Natalie is no longer certain of anything, even where reality ends and her dark imaginings begin. Ooh, that sounds good. And I like the cover. It's kind of giving me like Angela Anaconda vibes. So very much looking forward to this one. Okay, next we have another Garbogist prompted purchase. So this one I was able to find used for like two bucks, which I was very excited for because this cover is super cool. So that is In Praise of the Stepmother by Mario Vargas Llosa. And this was translated by Helen Lane. So again, I already talked about this in my August TBR, but basically it's about this married couple who are like, they have a very no holds barred, <laughs> sex life. They're very sexually open. But then when the woman in the relationship starts to have a sexual relationship with the stepson, cracks start to form. This is like a classic. So I am very much looking forward to this one. Okay, next is another one I was able to find used, which is very exciting because this is a pretty new book. And this is one that I talked about in my best books of the year so far. So that is Open Throat by Henry Hoke. And this is just such a cool little hardcover. I love the artwork. I love the color pattern and everything, but your girl just did not want to spend 25 bucks on a like 120 page book. You know what I mean? So I got her used, very happy with that purchase. So this is about a gay mountain lion who lives under the Hollywood sign. And this whole book is pretty much just him sitting back, making these observations about humans. We get a little bit of insight into how he came to live under the Hollywood sign. It was just like very fun, weird and melancholy. So very excited to have this added to my collection. Next is another one that I read recently and talked about and really, really liked. So that is Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. I admittedly don't love these covers that they've been giving Cormac McCarthy. I think if I find another version out in the wild that has a, you know, a cooler cover, I'll probably get it. But for now, I just really felt like I needed this in my collection. I do really want to reread it and annotate it and definitely have a physical copy that I can continuously go back to. So excited to have this in my collection. Next is a new one. And this was a cover buy, which is pretty rare for me, but I saw it at the bookstore. I really liked the spine. I really liked the cover. And then the synopsis sounded good. So I was like, you know what? Let's freaking do it. So that is Disturbance by Jenna Clark. No, Disturbance by Jenna Clake. This is about a woman who spies on her teenage neighbor. And it seems like her neighbor is performing this occult ritual to banish her ex-boyfriend. And then it says, alone in a new town and desperate to expel the claustrophobic memories of her own ex, the narrator decides to try to hex herself free from her past. But when the creaks and hums of her apartment escalate into something more sinister, she realizes that she may have brought her boyfriend's presence, whether psychological or paranormal, back to haunt her. That just sounded really good and I really liked this cover. I really liked the spine too. I feel like for me, what gets me is really cool spine artwork because when you have your books in your bookshelf, the spine is what you really mostly see. So for me to really want to add something to my collection, especially if it's one I haven't read yet, the spine has to really catch my eye. And it did. Next is one that I had heard about from the YouTube channel Maybe I'll Read Today. Again, this was similar to Now You're One of Us where I couldn't get it from my library. I couldn't get it from Interlibrary Loan. And I think even I couldn't get it in Barnes and Noble either. So it's like, I really had to hunt this down and find a copy. So I'm really glad I did because the cover is really cool. So that is Astral Season, Beastly Season by Tahi Saihate. And this was translated by Kalau Almany. And okay, can I hear some commotion for the cover? Good cover, good spine, back of the book. And it's one of those where it's like a paperback, but it still has like whatever that's called. Yep, yep. First of all, this is a debut novel. And the story follows Morishita and Yamashiro, two high school boys approaching the age in life where they must choose what kind of people they want to be. When their favorite J-pop idol kills and dismembers her boyfriend, Morishita and Yamashiro unite to convince the police that their idol's act was in fact by them. So very, very excited to add this to my collection. This cover is 
amazing. And I'll tell you more about my thoughts in my next wrap up. Next is a horror novel, Transorbital by Nathan Singer. Cover, it do be serving. So this is about Dr. Walter Freeman, a superstar lobotomist. He drives his lobotomobile coast to coast across post-war America, determined to save the country from its own troubled mind. All is going just swell until a number of Freeman's former protégés start turning up dead, and only Freeman's assistant, the kid, is able to recognize that something sinister is afoot. So yeah, I think this is supposed to be pretty spooky, scary skeletons. I'm assuming it's going to have some pretty good gore. I got nothing but hope. Okay, next we have another, I think this also is a cover by The Other by Thomas Tyron. And I'd never heard of this before, but NYRB classics just look so cool. So this says, Holland and Niles Perry are identical 13 year old twins. They are close, close enough almost to read each other's thoughts, but they couldn't be more different. Holland is bold and mischievous, a bad influence, while Niles is kind and eager to please, the sort of boy who makes parents proud. The family has gathered at its ancestral farm this summer to mourn the death of the twins' father in a most unfortunate accident. Mrs. Perry still hasn't recovered from the shock of her husband's gruesome end and stays sequestered in her room, leaving her sons to roam free. As the summer goes on, though, and Holland's pranks become increasingly sinister, Niles finds he can no longer make excuses for his brother's actions. I think this is gonna be like, one brother is a psychopath and the other one is not. I'm very excited because this cover is awesome. Love the spine. Love the NYRB classic. Okay, another NYRB classic I picked up. I read another book by this author and was surprised by how much I liked it earlier this year. And then this cover, this cover is just too good. So this is actually a short story collection. The cover has to be amazing for me to purchase a short story collection blind because I am not a short story girly at all. But that is Don't Look Now by Daphne du Maurier. So it's Don't Look Now and other stories. But this cover is just so good. I just couldn't not get it. And I had a gift card, so I don't feel as bad. So yeah, I had read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier earlier this year. I was surprised at how much I liked that. But yeah, her writing is really good, so I'm hoping I like these short stories. We'll see. Okay, another book that I've talked about in my best books of the year so far, I got a used copy of Tampa by Alyssa Nutting. Talked about this quite a bit on my channel. This is about a woman who was a teacher. She became a teacher for the purpose of abusing eighth grade boys. The most disturbing book I've ever read. Very highly graphic, but still funny in some parts. Alyssa Nutting is a fantastic writer. Definitely check content warnings before diving into this one, but if you think you can do it, I really, really love this book. Another book I talked about in my best books of the year so far was also able to find a used copy for like five bucks. So I picked up a copy of Perfect Days by Rafael Montes. This is about a psychopathic med student who becomes obsessed with this woman he meets at a barbecue. And when his advances are rejected by her, he stuffs her into a suitcase and goes on this trip with her where he basically just holds her hostage in the hotel room and has his and her family fooled into thinking they're dating and it's just cuckoo crazy bananas and I think you should read it. Next I purchased this classic because it's a classic I really want to read but I'm kind of intimidated by because it was written a really long time ago. It's a setting that I'm not very familiar with and a time period in history I'm not very familiar with but the cover was really cool and the synopsis sounds very intriguing to me. So that is The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov and what the fuck? This is blurbed by Daniel Radcliffe. It's now my favorite novel. It's just the greatest explosion of imagination, craziness, satire, humor, and heart. Okay, so this is apparently Daniel Radcliffe's favorite novel. Interesting. Okay, this was translated by Mira Ginsberg. The devil himself pays a visit to Soviet Moscow, accompanied by a retinue that includes the fast-talking, vodka-drinking giant tomcat behemoth. He sets about creating a whirlwind of chaos that soon involves the beautiful Margarita and her beloved, a distraught writer known only as the Master, and even Jesus Christ and Pontius Pilate. The Master and Margarita combines fable, fantasy, political satire, and slapstick comedy to create a wildly entertaining and unforgettable tale that is commonly considered the greatest novel to come out of the Soviet Union. I am intimidated, but gonna give her a whirl. Okay, next is a book that my partner actually bought for me. He read the synopsis and thought that I would like it. So that's very, very nice. So that is Looking Glass Sound by Katrina Ward. I read Last House on Needless Street by her earlier this year, and it was pretty good. You know, it wasn't like the most mind-blowing thing I've ever read in my life, but 
you know, it was good. So I'm definitely open to reading more Katrina Ward. So it says, in a cottage overlooking the sea, Wilder Harlow begins the last book he will ever write. It is the story of his childhood companions and a killer who stalked the small town where they spent their summers, of a horror that has followed Wilder through the decades, and of Skye, Wilder's one-time friend, who stole his unfinished memoir and turned it into a lurid best-selling novel. Novel, really, Sam, novel. This book will be Wilder's revenge on Skye, who betrayed his trust and died without ever telling him why. But as he writes, Wilder begins to find notes written in Skye's signature green ink, and events in his manuscript start to chime eerily with the present. Is Skye haunting him? And who is the woman drowning in the cove, whom no one else can see? No longer able to trust his own eyes, Wilder begins to fear that this will not only be his last book, but the last thing he ever does. Cool, that sounds good. That sounds good to me. So hopefully I like it. Next is another horror, like psychological thriller-esque book that I've been wanting to read for years. It's just one that has always kind of been kicked to the back. And I find when there's a book I have been wanting to read for a long time, but I don't feel the oomph to really like pick it up, purchasing a copy is a good way for me to move it up on my list because I really like to prioritize my physical TBR. So that is Confessions by Kanai Minato. And this was translated by Steven Snyder. And this is one of those where I'm almost certain I'm going to love this because everybody who reads this loves this and it seems like it's very much in my wheelhouse so yeah i really want to prioritize this it says after calling off her engagement in the wake of a tragic revelation yuko moraguchi had nothing to live for except her only child now following an accident on the grounds of the middle school where she teaches yuko has given up and tendered her resignation but first, she has one last lecture to deliver. She tells a story that upends everything her students ever thought they knew about two of their peers and sets in motion a maniacal plot for revenge. So yeah, I think this is gonna be very twisty, turny, psychological, thriller, horror, disturbing, any or all of the above. So hopefully I can read this by the end of the year. Next, I purchased an Eric LaRocca novella that I haven't read yet. So that is They Were Here Before Us. So very cool artwork. The cover is obviously very cool. And then it continues on to the back. And then there's actually like art work inside as well in the pages so that's very very cool nice touch love that okay i don't even actually know what this is about but i kind of like to go into books blind especially eric laraca books so the only thing it says on the back is the only thing more brutal than nature is love admittedly i haven't loved most of what i've read by eric laraca but what i have loved i've really loved so i'm really hoping that this is one that i love Next is another book that was really hard for me to get my hands on. Another instance where I couldn't get it from my library or in a library loan. And I read another book by this author that I really liked, so I wanted to read this. So this is Oh Honey by Emily R. Austin. I read Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead by her and really enjoyed that. I think this is supposed to be like that, but even darker, so sign me up. So this is about Jane, who is a telemarketer, and she uses a different name each time, and soon it becomes clear that she is calling the same man again and again. Each call is a new battle between them, with him becoming angrier and more threatening. But Jane isn't calling him at random. Jane has a purpose. Jane has a past, which seems to change each time she tells it. A sharp, funny, and dark novel about identity and connection. I read like the first page of this and I'm already like pretty sucked in. So I'm hoping I like this. Okay guys, last one. I have no freaking idea where I was recommended this book, but I had a heck of a time getting my hands on this book as well. So that is Bonding by Maggie Siebert. I'm pretty sure this is horror, but this cover is so cool. I love the graphic look of it. It's got this like cool matte cover. I love the interior design of this book too. Like the font that they've chosen is very, very cool. There's also some parts where there's like art sprinkled throughout so yeah, this looks really freaking cool. There's no synopsis on the back, so I have little to no idea what this is about, but I can read you the epigraph so you can get the vibe of like what this book is gonna be like. He was decapitated in an explosion of flame and glass fragments. Her body was found crushed into the dashboard. A mini cam report described them as fine youngsters. They never got a chance to fulfill their career dreams. That sounds pretty good. I'm very much looking forward to this one. High hopes. I'll let you know if it's good. I cannot physically hold all 45 books that I purchased, but here's just a nice solid stack of some of the books that I bought. So you can like this video if you want, comment, subscribe if you want. I would love to have you. And let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know what you've been buying lately. What are some books I need to have on my radar? And I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully very soon. Love you guys very much. Bye.